Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So before we get started with the video, I would like to wish each one of you a very happy Valentine's Day. So without further ado, let's quickly get started with the video now. Today's topic that we'll be discussing is a very interesting topic. The Jaipath has come up to ease out the attended automation. And I'm talking about none other than picture and picture feature. It was in preview since a long time, but now they have officially released it and we can use it to leverage and to ease out the attended automation. So as we all know that when a particular workflow is being executed, we cannot play around with the mouse or the keyboard and keep continue, continue doing our task because then that would lead in the breakage. The program would break because of the selector issues, because of that the program is not able to take control over the mouse or the keyboard because you are trying to use it. So to stop that, picture in picture mode has come up. So I just quickly execute this thing to show you that what this particular thing would do. So I would first run it in normal mode that in the main window that we are currently working on, the program would execute. And if we now do not let it, you know, uh, work, it would lead us, the program would break because it is not able to communicate with the browser and it can break because we have taken the control over the browser. But once we return back the control before 30 seconds, because that is the default timeout, then it would work. So like it is typed the company name and it is typed the first name. But when we enable the picture in picture mode, which is under the debug ribbon, you can see picture in picture. Once you click on it, you can see the color changes and it gets highlighted in comparison to all other options that are available here which means that you have enabled it. Now, when you run it in picture in picture mode, then things would be different. You can keep working on to your normal thing. You have this option to take control of the system. You can keep it on top if you want to. If you do not want, you don't need to keep it on top. You want to minimize it, you can minimize it and you can do whatever you want to do. So if I continue working here and there, I want to keep working on studio, or I want to do any other task. I want to keep filling some Excel. There could be n number of tasks which I would want to do. And I can keep continue, continue doing it and the bot would keep continue doing its job. So there would be no conflict and I need not to you know, wait that the bot finish the execution only then I'll be able to take control. So that's not the case. So as we can see, the execution has already stopped, right? It has entered what it had to enter. So if we just minimize it, we can see it has entered the company name and it has entered the first name. We can minimize it and we can keep continue doing our jobs. So that's what picture in picture does. Now uh, we can do one thing that if we publish it in the orchestrator. So let's go and publish it to the orchestrator. Entry point could not be found. Okay, that's all right. I know why it cannot be found because I've deleted the main of this file. So I'll reopen it again. Changing the name here. I have already done that. So now I'll open it again. So then it would be able to identify the entry point of the program. Now, as of now, I'll close this PIP thing because my execution has already been executed successfully. So I've closed it. Let's wait for the program to open so that I can publish it on the orchestrator. So I'll navigate quickly to the orchestrator. Meanwhile, this thing is also getting ready, the project. So it's now ready. And now I'll try again publishing it. So I'll directly publish it to the orchestrator main feed. I can change the name. Let's change the name to PIP. It's 1.0.1 and I'll publish it to the orchestrator tenant process feed and I'll click on publish. And as soon as it gets published, we'll go back to the orchestrator to see if any new package has been published. So it has been published. So let's quickly go back to the orchestrator. Let's go to tenant. Let's go to packages. 
So we can see your PIP few seconds ago, a process of a package was published. So now what are we going to do is we're going to create a process related to it and we'll name it our display name. Let's keep it PIP only or picture in picture. Okay. And let's just publish it. Great. So once it has been published, we'll open our UiPath Assistant. We'll refresh it here. As you can see, it is installing. So we'll just install it. And you even get that option that if you, from the UiPath Assistant itself, that you want to, you know, if you want to run a process in PIP mode. So everywhere, even in this process three, you can see start in PIP or start in your session. So if you start in your session, then it would run in the main window wherein you cannot do anything like you cannot play around with the mouse and keyboard till the time the bot is using it. But now if I click here, start in PIP from the UiPath assistant itself, was not tested for picture in picture. You want to start it? Yes. Because you say that I've tested it and you can start it. So now it's opening that session and it would now uh, run those things that it would type in the company name and type in the first name as you just saw. And meanwhile, I can keep doing my work. I need not to wait for it to complete. I can do whatever I want to. I can keep continuing with my task and what would do its task. And I can keep on checking even in between that whether, what is the status, where is it, if it's stuck somewhere. So you see it has done its job. So that's the main advantage of PIP. Also, one more thing what you can do here is that one thing is that you go select your process and you say start in PIP. Other thing what you can do is if you go to project settings, you have this that you say that this is PIP ready and you can say that start in PIP. When you do this thing, so then you are telling that I have already tested it and it's running well in PIP. So I want to proceed with it that I want to directly run it with PIP. So you can do it. So now once you've done that, then you need not to every time, you know, click here on picture in picture, then it identifies that, okay, you have tested it in PIP and you can run it. So now if I publish it here, and I have already said it that, yeah, it's PIP ready and you must start it in PIP. So while before publishing the package only, I'm stating this fact. So now if I refresh it here, a new package would be available here for the picture in picture or if I go to view process or instead I should go to explore packages. Okay, it has yet not been reflected or what. Go to packages. Click on refresh. Okay, so sorry, it has come with this robotic enterprise framework. So I published it with the wrong name, looks like. Okay, so I'll again just publish it once more and I'll give it the name PIP. If that's what I've mentioned in there, yes. Now I'll click on next, next and publish. And now it would take in the new updated package. So if I directly go to processes even, so I'll be able to see here a new version and I'll say view process and I'll say use the updated version, the one that was published a few seconds ago. And I've done it, I'll close it, I'll go to your iPod assistant, I'll refresh it, it is awaiting install, I'll say install. And now I would not say that start in PIP or start it in any session, I would simply start it. Or just a second, let me stop it. Let me close this window. Okay. And I'll say start. So it would by itself take the picture in picture thing because in my project settings only I have indicated that this is PIP ready. And whenever you start this process, start it in PIP. So it is doing the same thing. And while it is doing it, I can continue doing, doing, doing my work as I just told you. So over here, I'm also gonna show you one very important thing. So I have made this thing a, a small XAML file. Uh, which just gets the phone number from the user and I'm going to invoke it here in between. So I'll say invoke it here. So you can see that it's it's doing its, jo its job. And meanwhile, I am even, you know, manipulating the code or I'm coding. 
So th that's the main benefit of uh, PIP that you need not to wait for the job to process. So it's done, it has done its job. It has, you know, uh, type in the company name and type in the first name and it has executed, finished the execution, I'll close it. So now what is what this thing is doing? It's getting in the phone number from the user. So I'll do it here. And once it gets the phone number, I'm gonna save it somewhere. I'm gonna save it in in phone. That's the variable that I've created. And once I have the in phone, I have, you know, commented the code here, which enters the phone number also. So here is the phone number. So this particular workflow that I've invoked, I have an option that I can specify the target session that I want the current session, I want the main session, or I want the picture in picture session. I say that I want the main session, that it should run here in the main session, or I say that I want it in the current session. So when I say main session, you see that you get this thing. Only isolated workflows can be started in a different session than in parent. Changing the default value for target session must be paired with checking the isolated property. So when I'm saying that you do not run this thing in the picture in picture session, then I must also select the isolated property. And I'm even having a get phone number. I'm having a message box also here. So this message box also, because I'm telling this entire workflow to be in different sessions. So this message box also would be displayed in my main session. Now, once I run this thing, I'll enable the picture in picture thing. I have done this thing and I'm not gonna, now gonna run it. So when I run this, and because I have indicated that this particular thing, asking the user for the phone number and displaying what phone number the user has entered should come in my main workflow and not in my picture, picture in picture workflow. So once it opens this thing, the Chrome, now if I minimize it, this dialog box is in my main workflow and not in my picture in picture workflow. So these two are different windows altogether, as you can see. See, have a look here. They, these two are not the same windows. Instead, these are different windows. Let me, you know, just uh, stretch this window a bit so that you can see. Okay, so this is an altogether different window. So once I enter my phone number, I say it's one, two, three, four, five, and I click on okay, it would display me that okay, it's one, two, three, four, five. And now it would take this one, two, three, four, five to enter it in the picture in the picture mode. So that's how you know you utilize all these, uh, you can say, features. Okay. So th that's the job of it. That's the entire beauty of, uh, you can say, this picture in picture thing. Okay. So now it's fixed. So that's how you make use of picture in picture mode to you know help your attended automation. So while the bot is doing its job, you can minimize it. You can keep checking that whether it is performing correct or not, or if there is any human intervention or human input required anywhere. So you don't have to keep staring at the screen and stop doing your work. So you can do it all parallelly. You can keep doing your work and you can keep checking on it intermittently. And whenever an input or intervention is required, you can give it. So that eases your job even more. The bot is doing your job, but you do not have to wait for the job to complete its job. So that's the whole idea and whole beauty of picture in picture mode. I hope you like the video. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. See you in the next video.